It is so good to see everyone here tonight. I want to welcome everyone. And uh, we are so fortunate. We have an all-star lineup, literally. Uh, and some just amazing texts and some songs and a uh, neat little Devo at the end. And uh, I'm going to lead a couple songs. I'm going to lead a song I've never led here before. We'll see how it goes. It should be fun. And uh, <laughs> it's going to be going to be a neat evening one way or the other. Uh, I'm going to start by, since i got a full schedule, I'm going to start by getting Tom up here, and he's going to get us started. So. I was scattering around trying to check what everybody else was leading so I didn't duplicate it. And I'm first, so it really doesn't matter. If I lead your song, too bad. So, <laughs> um, first song we saw, number 472. Number 472. The Lord is our rock in him. Next number will be number 633. Number 633. Oh.
was there's a certain couple of somebodies here who this week celebrated 60 years of marriage. Anybody know who that is? Anybody want to raise their hand and admit to it? Nancy and yeah, the Sharps. 60 years this year. I think that's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful testament. And uh, saw them here today, and I wanted to make sure and mention that that uh, 60 years was it 20? Was it the 25th? Yes, 25th. So make sure and say something. Then. Six hundred thirty-nine. Rescue the perishing. This is one we don't do too much, but I believe enough of us know it that we can go through it. It's easy and it's short. So 
Let's all open up to the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 40, the Psalm of David, Psalms chapter 40. It reads, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the simp slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you're so awesome. You bless us a lot. Thank you for letting us be able to come here tonight to worship with you, to praise you, to glorify your name. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for us, for our sins. Please forgive us of our sins and help us to be more forgiving of others. Be with the sick at this time, the ones recovering, like Mac, Pauletta, Patsy Dickerson, and others. Be with them, comfort them, and bring them back to us so we can worship together. Be with the Christians throughout the world that are being persecuted and tortured. Be with them. Be with their brothers and sisters in the military fighting to help protect them. Be with our lesson tonight that we able to take it and apply it to our lives so we can be that shining light throughout the world. Be with those that are traveling to get where they're going safely and bring us back together. Please be, be with us throughout the world world that we can be that shining light and in Jesus name amen, amen. first one I got is 349 349 let's see
next one I got is number 406. 406. Oh. 
642. Let the lower lights be burning.
said, this world is not my home. Verses from Habakkuk, minor prophet, uh, from chapter 3, verse 17. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Save that song for just a second. We're going to do 490. There's something compelling about putting this song with that scripture. <laughs>
days of Elijah. Perfect. <coughs> Thumbs up if you've heard this. Yes, no, okay, a couple of us know this. Chris Smith, who uh, was able to attend the Harding Lectures, he was we were walking on the hike at Flint Hills. He's like, Brett, we gotta do that rescue song. And I said, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> and it was amazing how fast they picked it up. And so I thought tonight I would walk us through this and just see kind of where everybody's at. And uh, definitely a song I'd like to lead from time to time. So let's begin. Guys will begin and then the girls will kind of echo, uh, like a lot of songs. Rescue me from the wicked, oh If you'll mark that song here in just a moment, I'm not going to do the other song. <clears throat> if you'll mark that song here in just a moment, we will uh, be singing that. Uh, if you have an Old Testament, you want to turn to Psalm 127. Psalm 127. <clears throat> the Labor Day retreat at camp, I was reading some psalms and got to Psalm 127, and I just kept reading it over and over and over and over and over. Same thing with Psalm 133, the young man that read that. I kept reading that over and over and over, how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell in unity. And what a precious blessing the church is in that respect. <laughs> Jesus said, love one another as I have you. A new command I give you that you love one another as I have loved you. We live in a world today that is 
anim animistic toward each other, toward itself, toward itself even. <laughs> and what's so profound about those verses that we were reading tonight and that we were working through is that they help us understand that God has given us a better way. God has given us a better way and a way of profound blessing. I want to read, in the light of this election season, I want you to think of these verses from Psalm 127. And the, the, the politicians are saying, well, I'll build the country this way. And the other politicians are saying, well, I'll build the country this way. <laughs> I, want you, I want you to hear what the psalmist says here. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Boy, at some point, we have got to fix this. <laughs> at some point, I don't know how far it's going to go. I don't know how lost people think they want to get. But at some point, if we want to build this country again, it's going to have to be God that builds it. I'll just share a couple of thoughts with you. In my own family, uh, some of my goals uh, as, a, as a young father and a young husband and a young person were to just simply let God do it. Think about that for a second. It wasn't going to be all the money I might make because I didn't make any. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it wasn't going to be how smart I was. It wasn't going to be about how fun I was to be around. It wasn't going to be about any of those things. It was going to be about the house God built. And I often look at my life, and I often look at what the last 20 years have been, and I say it's definitely what God wanted. Definitely not necessarily what I would have written for myself. Definitely not what I maybe would have potentially envisioned for myself. But guess what? <laughs> In almost every case, or I guess you would have to say in every case, the best came of all those situations and all those things that happened and all those problems and all those things that came to be. Because it was God that was building, the best came of it all. Think about that. Remarkable. <clears throat> and here the psalmist is helping this, this nation of Israel that needs to figure out what direction they need to go. They need to figure out what way is good for them. They need to figure out how their life is going to make sense and how their life is going to have meaning and how their life is going to have purpose, how their life is going to make a difference. There are a lot of people out there in our political climate today saying they're going to make a difference only to probably find out that's not the difference that they thought they were going to make. What is so profound about the scriptures is what God says is what is going to happen. I have always loved this about the Bible, <laughs> and I have always loved this about the church, is predictability. You know, when we say and we plan and we, we, we look at what we can do for God, the good that will come from it is the good that will come from it. That simple. When I go and visit someone in the hospital, they're going to be encouraged. <laughs> when I call someone on the phone and they're going through a tough time, I'm probably, in almost every case, going to be able to encourage them. When I sit down with the word of God with somebody, I'm going to be able to enlighten them because God is going to build it. Notice what he says next. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. How, how, how do I sleep at night? Because <laughs> I know God's watching over me. He that keepeth Israel neither sleepeth nor slumber. <clears throat> I know the person watching over me is not sleeping on the job. Now, I get to sleep, but he doesn't. I love that. I love the idea that God is seeing things over my life that I can't see, protecting me from things I am not aware of. And sometimes he even shows me some of those things, and I'm like, wow, Lord, <laughs> thank goodness you took care of that because I wouldn't have been able to. The Lord watches so we don't have to. In vain you rise early and stay up late toiling for food to eat, <clears throat> for he grants sleep to those he loves. Profound thought. Grant sleep to those he loves. I don't know about you, but I've worked a lot of hours in my life. And uh, one of the things I love about Sunday is I know that what I'm doing here is more important than what I'm doing most of the time. <laughs> so, it's so awesome. You know, we, we come here and we get to do all these magnificent things and we get, to, we get to speak about these dramatic things and we get to share this dramatic family that God has given us, and it is a blessing. Verse 3, I just need to read this because it's profound. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. 
Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. And blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. And I would say blessed also is the church that is full of them. Blessed. I love vacation Bible school, right? <laughs> I love the opportunity to just gather them all together and, and build that quiver. And build that group and build that opportunity. And I love I love. Church camp, it's another opportunity to bring those kids together and to fill that quiver and to speak and to teach and to lead and to train and to motivate. Such a profound thing for us to think about and such an important thing for us to keep as a focus. The family of God, the family that God is building, the family that God is leading, the family that God desires. And he says finally at the end of that verse, they will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in the court. Truly, they will not be ashamed. You know, when we speak up and we speak out and we speak forward (laughs) for the Lord, God is going to do with that what he wills. I love love in Matthew chapter 10 when he sends the disciples out and he says, don't worry about anything. (laughs) They had a lot to worry about. (laughs) There was a lot of antagonism going on even in that time. But Jesus says, don't worry about what you're going to say. And don't worry about the things that might come to be because of it. Simply stand and simply speak and simply go. Profound. And when we make it that simple, it can be that simple. When we make it that easy, it can be that easy to just simply talk to someone, to just simply visit with someone, to just simply invite someone, to just simply encourage someone, to just simply lead someone in the way of the Lord. And this is what this dramatic text is reminding us of. And so, 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 so thankful that I had the opportunity to revisit this in that brief moment over the summer here a couple weeks ago. We're going to close now. If there's anything, if there's any way we can encourage you, if there's anything we can do for you, we invite you to come as we stand and sing this final song. Yeah.